أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أب القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الغر الميامين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا ثم اللعنة الدائمة الأبدية على أعدائهم ومخالفيهم ومنكري فضائلهم ومناقبهم إلى يوم الدين عدل الكتاب عدل الكتاب بن الزهراء شرفها رب البرية بالكرار يردفها صلى عليهم بمتن الذكر بارئهم صلوا عليهم صلاة لن قطع لها لسلامتكم وسلامة شيعة أهل البيت خدام الإمام الحسين العلماء الأعلام ارفعوا أصواتكم بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد Continuing from our historical look at the life and the achievements of a great personality which was the noble lady of Islam, Lady Khadija bint Khuwailid, the wife of the Holy Prophet, peace be, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and upon her and his holy progeny. The mother of Fatima al-Zahra, salamullahi alayha, we continue where we left off. Today we will go through what happened, what miracles occurred in the journey of the Holy Prophet when he was placed in charge of running the affairs of the caravan of the merchants belonging to Sayyidah Khadija alayhi salam and we will discuss and bring up some of the miracles that occurred in that journey and then very briefly speak about the marriage process between the two, what happened how did the Holy Prophet get married to Sayyidah Khadija? And mention the birth of Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra, salamullahi alayha. The, the relationship between Sayyidah Khadija as she was the first wife of the Holy Prophet in his lifetime. As we said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam never married 
another wife in the lifetime of Sayyida Khadija alayhi salam. But her relationship with the other wives of the Holy Prophet after the demise and the death of Sayyida Khadija alayhi salam and finishing off with the relationship of Ahlul Bayt, the Imams of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam with Sayyida Khadija, insha'Allah. First of all, let's travel with the caravan of the merchants of Quraysh as they used to travel in a year twice, two times in a year, the merchants from Quraysh, from Mecca and surrounding Mecca, they used to travel twice in a year, once in the winter to Yemen and once in the summer to Sham, to Syria today and the outskirts of Syria, the other countries, which then they used to call Sham. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, in the story we mentioned yesterday, he was tested, he was examined by Khadija to see if he was capable in being in control of her money, of her wealth in this trip. Then, they set a date for the caravan to move. Of course, in this big caravan, there were other merchants. There were other caravans. For example, the caravan of Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl, one of the relatives, one of the uncles of the Holy Prophet, he had a merchant's caravan. All Quraysh, all inhabitants of Mecca, they used to come together so they will travel together and hence be safe. If anyone wanted any help in any difficulties, they will all help each other. Why? Because the distance between Arabia and Sham took many weeks, if not months. And the road that the caravan was to travel and take was an uneven road. It incurred them to travel in valleys, sometimes go through mountains. So the road was, if we can call it, an uneasy drive, a very bumpy road. So here, at the start of the journey, they traveled a little distance outside Mecca, and they stopped. Some of the Arabians, some of the Quraysh said this travel, this trip is going to be an easy trip. So we have to nominate someone who is going to be our leader. We listen to him so we don't start negotiating and have problems between us of which route to take. Bani Hashim and the servants who are representing Khadija, they said, we follow Muhammad ibn Abdullah. They said, we will never follow anyone else. He has been nominated, so we will follow him. Abu Jahl being the outspoken person in that trip, in that caravan, he was amazed. How come they never nominated him? He said, I am Abu Jahl, and I have a position in Quraysh. Why shouldn't I be nominated? How come you nominate a young man who has not traveled in this path before? He's only a young man. He doesn't have experience. But I am a personality in Quraysh. He tried to belittle the Holy Prophet. Hamza the uncle of the Prophet, he came out and said, be careful Abu Jahl, you don't cross your lines. This is our master. This is the light and the nur that we follow. We will follow him. Rasulullah noticed that there is going to be a clash. There is going to be a fight between Hamza, his uncle, and Abu Jahl. He said, uncle, don't worry. Let them travel first in the daytime. 
let them go first and then we and our caravan and our camels we will follow on after them Abu Jahl said this is a good idea so they set off they started traveling in front of the caravan of Khadija and the Holy Prophet Abu Jahl arrived in the first station that caravans usually stop to rest and to take on food and water which was called Wadil Amwah. Wadil Amwah in those days was a valley where all the rain from the uh, from the, all the water from the rain used to congregate in that valley. Abu Jahl said, I know this area. We should stay here, calm down, rest, and then move on. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, because of his wisdom and his knowledge, he told his men, don't stay in this area. This area is not suitable for our camp. Then the Holy Prophet said, we'll move on a little further. Of course, his companions never knew why. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam explained to them later on. Some of the men, some of the merchants which were traveling with Abu Jahl, they said, no, this is the best area. We will stay here in, wa in Wadi al-Amwah. They stayed. After a couple of hours, they noticed that the clouds were coming together. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought down the rain so much that night that those people who were traveling with Abu Jahl they went with the water and with the seul sallallahu alaihi muhammad wa ali muhammad so they were carried the water took them took their animals took their wealth everything is as if they did not exist now the Holy Prophet and his caravan and what remained of Abu Jahl's caravan they needed to cross over because now this valley is full of water again another miracle for the Holy Prophet he told his companions and his men if you follow me and do what I do you will never drown they said okay Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam told his men, you put your foot, you step over the water. The water was very deep. It's a valley. It's full of water. It's where water used to congregate. Now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam told his men, say this phrase and you will be safe. They said, what is it? What's the phrase, O Prophet of Allah? The Holy Prophet said, Say Bismillahi wa Billah and cross over with clear intentions, you will be safe. Everyone, of course, there were people traveling with the Holy Prophet that in that stage they were still non Muslims, but they obeyed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. There were a couple of people of Quraysh who did not believe in the Lord and the God of the Holy Prophet. So they did not say Bismillahi wa Billah. They said Bismillahi wa Uzza. Those who said Bismillahi wa Billah, they crossed over the valley without any problems. But the individuals that said Bismillahi wa Uzza, as soon as they set foot in this, on this water, they all fell and drowned. Rasulullah asked, he wanted to let his companions know the effects of saying Bismillahi wa Billah. This is why it's very important, brothers and sisters in the Majlis, and those who are listening. The effects of Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim are very great in our lives. We should always make this ryth a rhythm in our mouths continuously. As we say Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we should also say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. 
So what was the next station? Now the Holy Prophet and his companions, they crossed over Wadi Al-Amwa safely. Again, Abu Jahl and his companions were in front of the Holy Prophet. This was the deal. Abu Jahl and his companions arrived at an area where there was only one well of sweet drinking water. He asked his men, this shows the, the ill-minded Abu Jahl, how much his mind was corrupt, how much he hated the Holy Prophet. He asked his companions, is there another route that the, the caravan of Bani Hashim would take? The people with Abu Jahl said, no, this is the only route. Abu Jahl then asked, is there another well of water in this area? They replied, no, this is the only well of water in this area. The next well is in the next station, which is a distance where if, no one, if anyone does not take water from this well, they will not be able to sur survive until the next station, until the next stop. Abu Jahl said, okay, now I want you to fill every container with water. You drink, let your camels drink and store water. And then when everyone has taken water, come and let me know. Everyone took water. They filled all their water containers with water. When everything and everyone had enough water, they came to Abu Jahl. They said, oh, Abu Jahl, everyone has enough water. What do you want to do? Shall we leave? Abu Jahl said, yes, we will leave. But before we do, let us bury this well. They asked him why. Abu Jahl said, because we want to get rid of the caravan of Bani Hashim. I want to destroy the son of Abdullah. I hate to see him. I don't want to see him live. So what they done, they started carrying rocks and sand and pebbles until they hid away the existence of that well. And then Abu Jahl said to one of his men, one of his servants, which his name was Falah. He said, oh, Falah, you and your horse and your water container, go hide behind this mountain. And I want you to monitor the caravan of Bani Hashim as soon as they arrive. I want you to memorize what will happen to them and how they will die and come and narrate this to me. Falah said, okay. The caravan of Abu Jahl set off. Falah and his horse and his water container hid behind the mountain. Falah, every time he wanted to see if anyone was coming, he used to bring his head out, monitor the area, and then go back and hide himself. Until he noticed the caravan of Khadija and the Holy Prophet and Bani Hashim coming closer to the area. Bani Hashim, they, they knew the area very well. They knew that in this area there was a well. They came to the Holy Prophet. They said, oh, Prophet of Allah, we are all going to perish. We are all going to die. Alaykum as wa rahmatullah. We are all going to be destroyed. The Holy Prophet said, why? What has happened? They said, oh, Prophet of Allah, Oh, son of Abdullah, there used to be a well here. And the next well where we can drink water is very far. We cannot travel in the desert without carrying water with us. The Holy Prophet said, don't worry. As usual, the Prophet came forward to fix the situation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam came and stood by the entrance of the well, by the mouth of the well. He raised his hands. He prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within seconds of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi opening his mouth and praying. They noticed water started gushing out. Water started coming out. And hence, Falah is watching and monitoring the situation. He was amazed. Quickly, 
he rode his horse and he came and reached the caravan of Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl noticed Falah coming. He said to his men, be quiet. Let me see what he's got to say. He is going to tell us that Muhammad and his companions have perished. Now Falah came. The first thing he said to Abu Jahl was, Oh Abu Jahl, ma falaha qawmun aadaw Muhammada. The one that wants to stand against this person will never be able to live. Never be able to be successful in his life. Abu Jahl said, what happened? Speak to me. Falah said, as you left, after a while, the caravan of Bani Hashim came. This, this person that you asked me to monitor, this young man, this son of Abdullah, he came, he stood in the mouth of the well. He started speaking words. He raised his hands towards the sky. And I saw the water started gushing out of the floor, of the ground. Abu Jahl here became very angry. He said, Ugrab an wajhi. You are no longer called Falah because you did not bring me good news. Go away. I don't want to see you. Abu Jahl continued his path until he arrived the miracles are long but i am looking at the time and i want to speak about the marriage of sayyida khadija with the holy prophet they arrived at sham of course first the caravan of abu jahl arrived so what happens when a caravan arrives and enters sham the people of that area they will come to the caravan they will see what they have and they will buy everything so in the first day they will spend all their money the caravan of Rasulullah and Bani Hashim arrived after the caravan of Abu Jahl and they noticed that the first day the people of that town they did not come and buy anything from them. Those who were representing Khadija with the Holy Prophet they were worried because that wasn't a good start. The next day early in the morning Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Hence, Abu Jahl was also monitoring the situation. He was laughing. He was making fun of the Holy Prophet. Rasulullah, early morning the next day, ordered, commanded his men, the ones in the, in the caravan, to represent, to present and bring out all of your products. When they did, all the Arabs and all of the inhabitants of Sham and that town, they came and started buying and purchasing all of the products that the caravan of Bani Hashim had and they paid three times more than the people yesterday had paid Abu Jahl. So this, this was another miracle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. After being successful in his business, Rasulullah and his caravan came back to the city of Mecca. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi sent people to go before him and announce their arrival. They came in the city of Mecca. They started shouting and informing that the caravan of Bani Hashim has arrived. Khadija bin Khuwailid came out. She wanted to see and monitor and check the status of her caravan. Why? Because every year there had to be some casualties and some deaths amongst her people and amongst the camels that used to go and come back. But this year, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam managed to go and come back, protecting every single animal, every single camel, and every single man that accompanied him in the trip. No one had been affected in any way. All the camels were in perfect condition. And he had gained more wealth and more money. Three times more than any other caravan would have been able to get. Isn't that a miracle? Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Rasulullah 
as he was monitored by Khadija alayhi salam, she told her servants, I want you to monitor this person and come and tell me everything that happens with you in that trip. One of the servants of Khadija in the caravan of Rasulullah, he came. His name was Maysara. Maysara came. He was greeted by Khadija. Khadija said, sit down, Maysara. Tell me, speak to me. Inform me. What happened with you in that trip? Maysara said, what shall I say? Where shall I start? Min wan abd? I loved this son of Abdullah before you gave me the responsibility of looking after him. I even loved him more when you gave me the responsibility. And during our trip, I even loved him more and more. Where shall I start? And he started describing to her all of the miracles and all of the successful trades that the Holy Prophet had done. Here, Khadija was taking in all of this information. And her likeness and her love for the Holy Prophet was increasing in her heart. She was, as we said yesterday, she was a Tahira. One of her names was Al Mutahara. She was a great noble lady with akhlaq. She sent off to the Holy Prophet. The Holy Prophet came, he wanted to report to Khadija all of the successful contracts and trades he had done. He explained to her, he came in, she welcomed him. Of course, I said, I mentioned yesterday that Khadija used to speak to foreign men from behind a screen, from behind a cover. She was in perfect hijab. She had never uncovered herself to foreign men. Here, after Rasulullah reporting back, Khadija said to him, O oh son of Abdullah, before I knew you, the leaders of the Jews and the Christians spoke to me about you and they told me about you and they informed me that they have descriptions of you in the Torah and in the Injil. And before you set off, I, I monitored you, I looked at you, you was very handsome, you was very beautiful, you was very new, knowledgeable. And now I have a request from you, O son of Abdullah. Arabs in the Majlis, they know that it is a ritual that the man seeking to get married, he goes and advances and asks for the lady's hand in marriage. Khadija, in this circumstances, she said, Oh, oh Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Muhammad, wa Ali Muhammad. I want you to go back to your family, to your uncles, and tell them to come and ask my hand in marriage from my father, Khwailid. She presented herself as a wife to the Holy Prophet of Islam. Why? Because she was told that this individual will get married to a very important lady in Arabia, a lady of position, a lady of power, a lady of wealth. They advised her, do not let this young man become the husband of other ladies and women in Mecca. So here, Rasulullah, pleased, came and spoke to his uncle and his auntie Safiya and requested that they come and ask the hand of Lady Khadija in marriage from her father Khwailid and her uncle Waraka ibn Nawfal. They came, cutting the long story short, Lady Khadija was approached by her father Khuwailid, said to her, this is Bani Hashim asking your hand in marriage for their son, Muhammad, son of Abdullah. What do you say, O oh, Khadija? 
Khadija, without hesitation, said, O oh, Father, I accept. O oh, Father, do not ask them to pay any dowry, any mahar, because I have covered that. Why, O oh, Khadija? You are a lady where the masters of Quraysh, the leaders of Arab, they came, they asked your hand in marriage from me and you declined them. You are a lady of nobility. You are a lady of a great position. She said, I know this young man and I know his financial situation and circumstances. Don't ask if they if you, if if you insist, I will pay for the dowry. And she did. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that ceremony, in that marriage ceremony, Archangel Jibrail came down and announced to the people of the heavens and the skies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala zawajal tahiratan min at tahir. So she came to the house of the Holy Prophet and she told her uncle Waraka ibn Nawfal, O oh, uncle, go and stand between Ar-Rukn wal Maqam and announce to the people of Mecca, O oh, people of Mecca, Khadija, the daughter of my brother Khuwailid, announces that all the camels, she had more than 80,000 camels, all the gold, all the animals, all, everything that she owns, she has given wahabat kulla shay'in li Muhammad ibn Abdullah. So she started her life by giving away herself and her wealth for the sake of Islam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, Mastaqama deeni illa bi shay'ain bimali khadijah wa sayf ali ibn abi talib alayhim as salam. This was the marriage. Now, how did Khadijah alayhi as salam live with the Holy Prophet? In a time where the enemies of Quraysh, the enemies from the Arabs, they were attacking, beating up the Holy Prophet, hitting him with stones. She protected him. She used to cover him every time they used to want to attack the Holy Prophet. Khadija used to be a shield. All the stones and all the garbage used to fall on Khadija. Protecting Risale. On the day that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and the days and the nights that he used to go up to the Ghar Hara, Jabal al Nur and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a note, all those who have been to Hajj, they know how difficult it is to go up that mountain. For a young healthy person to go up that mountain, it takes at least four or five hours. Because going up this mountain is very hard. Khadija alayhi salam, alayhi salam used to take water and food every day and go up the mountain and to the cave of Hara in order to serve the Holy Prophet. One day she became very tired. Jibra'il came down on the Holy Prophet. And said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, this is Khadija, she's coming up the mountain. She is tired. Go and receive her. Istaqbilha, ya Rasulullah. Wa ablighaha min Allah salam wa minni salam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on many occasions, he used to bring down and salute this noble lady. This is her relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she used to sacrifice her well-being for the sake of this great man. Now let's come and find out her relationship with the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, alayhim The day 
that Jibra'il came down with the news that he is going to be sent to prophethood, Rasulullah came down shivering, afraid. He came to the arms of Khadija. He said, oh Khadija, I am cold. Dathirini. She came. She placed a cloak on top of the Holy Prophet. She said, Ma bika habibi, ya Rasulallah, what is wrong? Tell me. Speak to me. She said, Al-an nazala alayya habibi Jibra'il wa ablagani salam wa qala li Allah al-aliy al-a'la ya'murka bi an tasda' bil risalah wa al-an anta mab'uthun bil nubuwa. أتؤمنين يا خديجة؟ She is the first lady in Islam who became Muslim and followed Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وآله. She is the first lady in Islam to bear witness in the ولاية. علي بن أبي طالب came. Ali the first man in Islam to follow the Holy Prophet of Islam. Ali came. She said, he, the Holy Prophet said to Khadija, Oh Khadija, now I have been sent to prophethood. This is before wa andhar ashiratak al Oh Khadija, I have been sent to prophethood. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ali, my cousin is going to be the first imam and khalifa after me. Will you follow him? Khadija said, yes. He is my imam and he is like my brother. Khadija alayhi salam used to bring up Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib. The day that the Holy Prophet took Ali from his uncle Abu Talib, he was a little child. Khadija alayhi salam helped the Holy Prophet bring up Ali ibn Abi Talib. So she knew Ali. She loved him like a brother. Her relationship with Ahl al-Bayt. We read, in the ziyarah of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, in the ziyarah of Imam Hassan alayhi salam, in the ziyarah of Ali al Akbar alayhi salam, Assalamu alayka yabna Khadija tal. There is a reference in the ziyarat of Ahl al Bayt. Peace and blessings and Allah salutations be upon you. O oh, son of Khadija. Imam al Hussein on the day of Ashura spoke to his enemies and said, O oh, people of Kufa, O oh, people of Sham, do you not know that Khadija Tul Kubra is my grandmother? Imam Zainul Abidin in his khutbah in Sham, he mentioned an Abnu. Adimatil Juyub, Anabn Fatima al Zahra, Anabn Khadija al Kubra. How did Bani Umayyah react towards this noble lady? They tried to change history by saying that Khadija alayhi salam, when she got married to the Holy Prophet, she was 40 years old. And the fact that she was not a virgin, she had married two men before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This is one of the false statements made against Khadija when they tried to ruin the image of Ahl al-Bayt and Fatima al-Zahra sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Imam al-Mahdi in al-Dua al-Nudbah, when we recite Dua al-Nudbah, what do we say? Assalamu alayka ya ibn Muhammadin al-Mustafa. Assalamu alayka ya ibn Ali al-Murtada. Assalamu alayka ya ibn Fatim. Ya ibn Khadija al-Gharra. Assalamu alayka ya ibn Fatima al-Kubra. This is the relationship of Ahl al-Bayt. Why? Because this lady gave everything she had not only for the sake of Islam, but also to protect the Holy Prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made her be a lady where the start of imamah is with her. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, I went up 
to the heavens Layla ta usri bi ila sama Jibrail took my hand and we went inside the paradise dakhalna al jannah Rasulullah says Jibrail took me to a tree nawalani to fahatan I ate from this apple Jibrail says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to you O prophet of Allah go down and go and become close to your wife Khadija because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in you the nur and the light of imamah existing in Fatima al-Zahra salawatullahi wa salamu alayha sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad I will finish off my lecture tonight with this riwayah. So we know the relationship of Khadija alayhi salam in terms of the wives of the Holy Prophet. There were some of the wives of the Holy Prophet who loved Khadija. Like Umm Salama, she used to speak positively in front of Rasulullah because he used to love Khadija. But there were others. Man qul warada fi sahih al-Bukhari an lisan Aisha lam akun adhmar hasadan li zawjat al-Nabi bi qadar hasadi li Khadija. This is her. She is saying her relationship with Khadija how it was. Aisha never saw Khadija. At the time of the Holy Prophet, she was a young lady. Lam akun adhmur hasadan li zawjat al-Nabi bi qadar hasadi li Khadija. Ma'a innani lam araha fi hayati wa thalika li kathrati ma kana al-Nabi yadhkuruha indi. Ahyanan kuntu aqulu fi nafsi ih ka'annahu lam takun hunaki imra'atun fi al-alam ghayr Khadija. Wa tadif Aisha qailatan. ذات يوم خامرني شعور شديد بالحسد اتجاه خديجة فقلت للنبي إلى متى تتحدث عنها ألم يبدلك الله بخير منها فقال والله ما أبدلني الله خيرا منها رسول الله يقسم ما أبدلني الله خيرا منها لقد آمنت بي إذ كفر بي الناس وصدقتني إذ كذبني الناس وواستني بمالها إذ حرمني الناس ورزقني الله أولادها وحرمني أولاد الناس and this is in narrated by Ibn Hajar in Fath al-Bari جزء السابع صفحة مية وسبعة وثلاثين this is the relationship of the wives of some of the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam towards Khadija. One day Khadija started shouting in the face of Fatima. She started saying, who is your mother? And she pushed Fatima to Zahra. Fatima to Zahra started crying. Rasulullah came in. He noticed Fatima is crying. He said to her, oh Fatima, why are you crying? She said to him, Oh Father, one of your wives had spoken negatively about my mother Khadija. Fatima to Zahra used to love her mother so much that the night that Rasulullah buried Khadija in Mantaqat al Hujun in Mecca, after dying in Shabi Abi Talib, Rasulullah carried Khadija to Al Hujun, Mantaqat al Hujun. Rasulullah, when he came back, Fatima to Zahra, a young girl, she started hovering around Rasulullah, moving forth, coming forth and back, saying to her, Oh Father, where is my mother Khadija? Aba ya Rasulullah, ayna ummi Khadija? Urid ummi Khadija, laqad janna al-layl. Aba ya Rasulullah, ana muta'awwid, ana nama bijwari ummi Khadija. Oh Father, where is my mother? I want my mother, oh Rasulullah. 
you know a little girl she will be attracted and attached to her mother very much Rasulullah quieting down Fatima he said to her come and sit in my lap oh Fatima he said to her, oh, Fatima, Jibra'il is saying to me that your mother Khadija is in a palace in the paradise. Here, uh, Khadija alayhi salam, before she passed away, she called Asma bint Umais. She said, oh, Asma, I am leaving this world. But my daughter Fatima will grow up on the night, on the evening of her marriage. Every girl looks for her mother to be beside her. Ya Asma, I am not going to be there to look after my daughter and to take her hand and to take her to her husband. Oh Asma, I want you to place, to replace me. And and I want you to be there for my daughter Fatima. On the night of the marriage of Fatima, Rasulullah asked all the women to leave the room, but Asma remained. Rasulullah said, oh, Who is this? Have I not said for everyone to leave? Asma says, Naam ya Rasulullah, Walakin Zawjatuka Khadija Amaratni. أكون مع فاطمة في ليلة زفافها. What does this remind us of? This reminds us of Zainab. When Amir al-Mu'minin went out to bury فاطمة الزهراء. After coming back, he noticed Zainab standing behind the door, greeting her father, Abba ya Amir al-Mu'minin, أين أمي فاطمة? ذهبت إلى مصلى فلم أجدها ذهبت إلى مكان منامها فلم أجدها صبرها أمير المؤمنين وقال لها يا زينب خفف البكاء فإن لبكائك يوم سوف تبكين على إخوتك في كربلاء سوف ترين أخيك العباس مرمرما على شاطئ الفرات وترين أخيك الحسين على رمضاء كربلاء فسلام عليك أيتها السيدة الجليلة خديجة أم المؤمنين أم الزهراء الإنسية القدسية نسأل الله بحقك أن يرزقنا شفاعتك في الدنيا وفي الآخرة نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم العز الأجل الأكرم وبمحمد وعلي وفاطمة والحسن والحسين والتسعة المعصومين من ذرية الحسين أن يعجل في فرج مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان يا الله اللهم ارض عنا إمام زماننا واجعلنا من أنصاره وعوانه والمستشهدين بين يدي يا الله اللهم لا تخرجنا من الدنيا حتى ترضى عنا وإلى أموات المؤمنين والمؤمنات ومن مات على الإيمان لا تنسوا المرضى طلبوا من عندنا الكثير من الأخوة والأخوات الدعاء للمرضى نقرأ هذه الآية الشريفة خمس مرات لقضاء الحوائج ولشفاء المرضى ولكشف الهموم والغموم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أما أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أما يجيب 
مضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء يا الله اللهم شافي مرضانا ألبسهم ثوب الصحة والعافية بكرمك يا الله وتقبل منا هذا القليل بكرمك وإلى أموات المؤمنين والمؤمنات سيما أموات الحاضرين والجالسين والسامعين وخدمة الحسين العلماء الأعلام اللهم ابعث لهم ثواب سورة المباركة الفاتحة مع الصلوات